Okay, ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand? And, uh, gentlemen, would you lead us in the play? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, God, and indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Remain standing for our prayer, please. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for this day and for the privilege of being able to be alive and to live in this community. We thank you for our nation. We thank you for our servicemen that are serving our country uh, throughout the world, and we ask that you protect them tonight. I ask that you be with this meeting, be with this group of people in this room that serve this community, and I ask that you bless them. I pray that this meeting, that you grant them wisdom and understanding and clarity in each situation that they can respond what is best for this community. And we just do ask your blessing upon each one. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Don. Good, Good to see you back, again. Don. Good to see you again. <coughs> Call to order our city council meeting of September 7th. Uh, second item on our agenda is public comments, community uh, announcements, or recognitions. Do we have any? We have none. Item number three is consent agenda, items A through I. Uh, A is the approval of the minutes of the city council meeting of August 17th. B is the approval of uh, budget amendment number five, uh, moving uh, general funds, uh, GPWA funds, capital equipment funds, and uh, stabilization funds and airport funds. Uh, C is the approval uh, approve the renewal of the Honor Park lease between the City of Guthrie uh, and the American Legion. Uh, D is the approval of the Civil Defense Siren Maintenance Agreement between the City of Guthrie and Goddard uh, Enterprises. E is the approval of the agreement between City of uh, Guthrie Logan County Services for temporary uh, shelter care for juveniles. F is the approval of the Cooperative uh, Service Field Agreement between the City of Guthrie uh, and the uh, regional airport and the uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture. Uh, G is uh, consider uh, approval to accept the assignment and assumption of agreement between CEC, uh, Park Hill, and the city of Guthrie. H is approval of professional What's service agreement with Dr. Warden for, uh, to serve as the medical director for the fire uh, department. And I is the approval of EMS uh, agreement between City of Guthrie and Logan County Emergency Medical Services Board of Trustees. I'll entertain a motion to approve a consent of consent. Can I, can I ask a quick, pardon? quick question? Question, absolutely. On G, can somebody explain that one to me? D. G. Oh, G. Assignment and assumption agreement with CEC Park Hill. Before we get that date. Our, can I ask our uh, consulting engineer at the airport, uh, that group changed and went from one firm to another firm. We'd like to continue to use that same group of okay. individuals. Okay. That's all I need. Thank yep. you. Okay. Are we in the GPWA meeting that started at 7? No. We're in the city council meeting. We flipped them this time. Oh. Another one of them deals just for me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so we're city council meeting. Motion to approve. Second. And a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Can I shoot? Votes. See the votes. Uh, unanimous approval from all those present to approve consent agenda items A through I. Item number four, continuation of the uh, uh, the workshop. Uh, actually, we don't need it. It's not uh, necessary. Because we completed everything, so uh, that's not necessary. Um, uh, open a public hearing uh, to review the fiscal year 2022 budget, uh, general fund, miscellaneous funds. Uh, if there's anybody that wants to ask a question, this is your opportunity <coughs> in public hearing. Hearing none, close the public hearing. Item number six, discussion and possible action on resolution 2021-25, uh, adoption of the fiscal year 2022 budget. So moved. General fund second. miscellaneous. Have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion or questions? Submit your votes, please. See the votes. 
unanimous approval from those present uh, to approve the fiscal year 2022 budget as presented. Um, item number seven, discussion possible action to approve resolution number 2021-27, adopting the revised non-bargaining employment payment plan uh, and adopting, well, payment plan which includes uh, the personnel policies and adoption of the res city resolution 99-15. Uh, our current pay plan had become uh, dysfunctional, had not been maintained and had not been followed for a number of years. So this uh, is a revision uh, that sets the floor with a minimum of $15 an hour for full-time employees uh, and our non-bargaining employees uh, were uh, adjusted based on their years of service on the new pay scale. They didn't all start step one. Uh, and it shows each position where they're classified in the play plan, uh, two and a half percent steps between each uh, step in the pay plan. Uh, and this pay plan has been incorporated in the budget that you just adopted. Be glad to answer any questions. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? Submit your votes, please. Submit votes. Unanimous approval for those present uh, to approve resolution uh, 21 2021 27. Item number eight discussion possible action to authorize city staff to renew a contract with United Health to provide medical, dental, and vision uh, sir, uh, insurance and uh, Dearborn National to provide. Life, uh, A, D, and D insurance coverage for the fiscal year. Yep. Um, during the break, I handed out um, some uh, spreadsheets uh, that outlined the benefits and the options that we had for FY22. Um, United Healthcare um, came out to be uh, what we feel is the best option for our city employees. Um, it's the identical plan to last year for health, dental, and vision, um, and uh, no change to life insurance to Dearborn either. Um, I'd be happy to answer any specific questions that you guys have, um, but bottom line, as Leroy mentioned during the budget hearing, it's about a 9.34% increase from FY21 to 22 in order for us to maintain the same plan, same benefits. I'd like to explore city council being put on this plan. Okay. Seriously. <laughs> I've talked to Leroy about it. I'm not kidding. I, I would think maybe uh, that could be assigned to our finance committee to work with uh, Kristen and maybe even our city attorney because I think we'd have to look at our charter mm -hmm. to make sure that our charter allowed that as a benefit. Uh, I, you know, other cities do that, yeah. and, and I think it could be warranted as, as a benefit, uh, but I think we need to, one, review the charter and make sure it's allowed, and number two, work with Kristen to see the opportunity to add council members, uh, opportunity to be covered by our uh, employee health insurance. Okay, good. So we'd have to have a finance meeting before open enrollment? Um, open enrollment's October, so that'd be really ambitious. Um, He's ambitious. <laughs> about, as, about as ambitious as they come. I, I'll definitely work with uh, Leroy and see what that looks like. I, okay. I would think that... I'm actually if, on the finance committee, and I can make myself available at any time. Okay. <laughs> I, I would think that, uh, and I forget the correct terminology, but I would think even if it's after the enrollment date, you if can. it was determined, it's it, it is an event that would create an opportunity right. for an additional yeah. enrollment. Yeah. I forget the fancy term for that, but... And Kristen, this covers full-time and part-time? Um, just our full-time. Just full-time. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Okay. Yep. So um, that smaller sheet uh, is an anticipation of if all full-time employees, if we were fully staffed, um, took all of the insurance, which we've got, of course, we've got some folks that are not staffed, um, some open positions, and some folks that just opt out of the insurance for various reasons. So that the smaller page shows um, the, the budget reflected based on 126 employees. That's everybody had it. We were fully staffed. Um, the larger spreadsheet shows uh, the budget numbers based on who's enrolled currently as of the time that we got the quotes. So could we get $15 an hour too? 
Um, pushing your luck. Well, while we're at it, we might as well ask that. Pushing your luck. Really pushing the envelope. Yeah. About well, 15 a year. That would be at least a, a huge increase. If there comes a time you're worth it, Lee. <laughs> I, uh, I have read some things where, where insurances were going up significantly more than 10%. So I salute uh, you and your team who negotiated this because that's a. Uh, I think that's pretty good. And I give a lot of that credit, or all of the credit, honestly, to Benchmark Financial. Um, they did a great job negotiating for us this year. Um, last year, um, Leroy did a, a really smart thing and, and negotiated a 12% cap on health insurance. Um, and then Benchmark took that a step further and, and negotiated that even further down to 9.5%. So they did a really great job I for us this year. I see Benchmark in the back. Absolutely. Yep. It's the one Thanks, smiling back there. Move to approve. <laughs> Second. second. A motion and a second. Any other discussion? <coughs> Submit your vote. Thank you. Oh, right. Unanimous so approval then uh, for all those present, uh, Councilman present, uh, to uh, move forward with that uh, with that payment with that plan for insurances. Um, item number nine: uh, discussion, possible action to confirm mayor's nomination to the park board. Uh, take these individually. Uh, appointing um, Colleen Golightly for a two-year term through June of 20, uh, 2023. I think you all have seen her application. Leroy's got a question. Yes, sir. When you get ready for discussion, I've got some items to point out. Okay. Um, we're taking them individually. Yes. Okay. I still have comments. Okay. <laughs> so you want to On A or B? Well, I think he's waiting for a motion on this. So moved. I have a motion. Second. Second. For a. a. Motion and a okay. second. For a. Now discussion. For A. Okay. I just wanted to point out, technically, uh, these are unexpired terms that end on June 7, 2022, on the uh, agenda and on the staff uh, cover letter. It says to appoint him through June 6, 2023, which is fine if you do that, but technically these terms started back in 2020 and end on June 7, 2022. Because they've been vacant that long. Correct. Uh, and so my recommendation on the first motion would be, so you don't have to come back in eight months, would be to appoint uh, Ms. Golightly, am I saying Golightly, that correctly? Correctly. Uh, to fill the unexpired term through June 7, 2022, so and right. then subsequently a pointer for a, an additional two-year term through June 4, 2024, so that we've got it covered, don't have to come back in nine months, do this again, uh, and then you still have it staggered where you'll have three up in 23 and two up in 24. So we're going to amend the motion. Who had the motion? I did. I yeah. amended it. Will you accept that? Yes. And you had the second? You accept that amendment? Uh-huh. Okay. Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. Submit your vote. All that's right. See the votes. Unanimous approval from council present. Uh, then to appoint uh, Ms. Golightly uh, for a, a continuing uh, of, uh, existing term which is, goes to June 7th of 2022, uh, and then for a full two-year term uh, to June 7th of 2024. June 4th. Uh, and then <coughs> uh, 9B, uh, this is the uh, uh, reappointment of uh, Van uh, Cordray uh, to the Park Board. He's already served two full terms. Uh, I want to, go ahead, I want to talk about that when you're okay. done. Has already served two full terms uh, under the <coughs> resolution 2020-18. Uh, the council can waive our, our uh, restriction of two consecutive terms uh, on the on the board, uh, and uh, that's the nomination is to. But it's not just for this one; it's for going forward. It would no longer be there. The restriction would be gone. No, just on this appointment. Okay. It's just on this appointment. Uh, and uh, we've had a couple of those in the past, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, this would be for uh, for Mr. Cordray. See, I've tried to set the precedent where we just get rid of that. If people want to serve, we let them serve. The, you know, okay, and we haven't done that. 
and we should have done it. I used Van as an example of that because he is an exemplary park board member, but it's real hard for me to go for this since we're not getting rid of the whole deal. I think that would be a separate, uh, separate. Well, then I'd like to table, I'd like, I'd, like to ta right, I'd like to table, make a motion to table Van. Wait a minute. Until we come well, back to Leroy, it. Leroy's going to ask I think this one might bear some uh, additional consideration because the park board is only two years at a time. True. And the other boards that we've dealt with, similar to your talking about, have three-year terms. So when they get a two years or two terms, they get six years. In this case, in the park board, when you limit them to two terms, they only get four years. So I, I think this one is a little unique compared to the others. But I still want to take up the, the discussion of this sure. term and, limit deal anyway. And, and that could be another. I'm just pointing out this one's a little unique because the terms are only two years long instead of three years. Well, so. Can somebody please explain what the purpose of that is? Why we have the well, limitation there's, um, on terms? There's at least three of us sitting here <laughs> that, that voted for this <clears throat> about... Uh, Four years ago, five, something five like years that. ago, <clears throat> because put the restriction on, put the restriction on it, uh, so that so that there would be an opportunity. Uh, well, let me just to speak quit for myself. And an, an opportunity for uh, new new vision, yeah. new blood, if yeah. you will, uh, and and not somebody that. Well, 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 but what's happened with that is that there's not enough people to fill the opportunity, right. so that kind of blew up on right, us. And right. when we make bad decisions. Uh, as good business people, we ought to be able to say that was probably not the best decision and, being made. And, 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 I, and, and I, I was part of making that decision. I think we can, and I was too. Yeah, so uh, with that being okay. said, I'll make a motion to uh, for, for Van. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion uh, and a second then for Mr. Cordray uh, to, um, <clears throat> under the provisions of the resolution 2020-18, uh, to... Uh, have a third consecutive term to your term. Would, would we do his the same where it is for nine months to fill out this term and plus one more? Like we did that so that they're all the same and they, they end the same? Brian did. Get it. Okay. 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 You're just amending the dates. <laughs> Brian, you, know, you, I, you know, I really want to address, I, we can, I think, come back to that. I really want to address this getting rid of this term limit thing before we move any further on. Well, I think that it's fine like it, it is. Okay, we have, we have, okay. He can come back when that You don't have to decide. accept the, the yeah. suggestion. Yeah, I don't accept that. Okay, okay. We, have a, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hmm? Submit your votes. Uh, See the votes. Uh, we have uh, a vote of five to one, uh, so the motion would carry. Yes, the motion still carries. Um, uh, to appoint uh, Mr. Uh, Cordray uh, for a uh, another uh, two-year term uh, uh, to the park board. So, point of question, I guess, for clarification. If I understand correctly, the council members would like to consider city attorney adopting a, an amendment to the current ordinance to consider doing away with the term limits? Yes. I've been requested by Council okay. Butler. If there are any other changes you want to make to that ordinance, uh, I think city attorney or Kim could send out the, the current ordinance for you to review. Uh, see if there's anything else you want to talk about changing, and then city attorney could draft one for future council meeting to consider that. That's a good idea. Well, what happens if you have new blood that wants to be a part of them, and they come forth, and and so how, there needs to be a process to give them an opportunity the, to be considered. I would and say replacing those that have been on the board. The, the city council would still control. It would be their decision. It just wouldn't be controlled by an ordinance. The city council can always decide to appoint new individuals rather than reappoint existing ones. But we've got some that have been on there 34 years and refused to leave. 
Yeah. yeah uh, huh. Whose fault is that? Well, that's these guys. <laughs> we'll have that. We'll have that in-depth discussion when it comes up on the. Well, but we also have agenda. boards that have no, have, don't have headcount because of it. We will discuss that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That's that's absolutely the record right. that I'm. You're absolutely that's right. That's my position. Okay, let's move on to the when it comes up as an actual agenda item for. That'll be the juicy. Two weeks. <laughs> Okay, uh, item number 10, discussion possible action to adopt and approve ordinance number 3360, closing a 20 foot uh, by 300 foot alley. Uh, Dan? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as you indicated, this is for an alley closure. Uh, it's on the uh, basically east central part of town on the very eastern University Avenue. Uh, it's generally over by South Hazel and uh, University Avenue. The applicant owns most of the property, I think actually outside one or two properties in that entire block. And so they were wanting to close the alley because they want to go through the process to vacate it so they can combine all of their properties into one. Because as it sits now with an alley, you can't physically combine all the properties. Uh, there were no objections from the utilities uh, and the city does not have any water or sewer utilities there as well. So there was no objections from uh, the city nor the um, utilities was there any objection by the other two no owners? Uh, no but as with every uh, case like this all property owners within 300 feet were notified so there was notification provided to not only them but also others in the area okay all right. so how does that combine the property I mean, I know yeah, because right now that you, you physically have that right away that sits there. Right. So you can't, you know, because there's properties to the north and south. It's kind of like the typical blocks we have over here where you have properties on the north and the south. This alley's behind all of these properties. No, it runs right in the middle of it. So they uh, own property to the north and to the south. Okay. So yeah. And so by getting in the middle. Of I see. Yeah. The yeah. The alley. Okay. All right. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. And a second. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Submit your vote. That's one. I'll vote for it. Yeah. Unanimous approval then uh, to move forward with uh, <laughs> ordinance number 3360. Uh, item number 11, discussion of possible action on a request for a spirit wing aviation uh, for the city of Guthrie to provide uh, consent uh, for the assignment of hangars Two and 21 and the fuel system. Um, Shalon, Leroy, uh, who's taking that? I will start it. Uh, uh, Spirit Wing Aviation uh, leases two hangars at the airport. Uh, they're identified as hangar two uh, and hangar 21. Uh, I think you're all familiar with uh, two hangars those are. And then they have a fuel system agreement that is tied into Hangar 21. We have received a request from uh, the owner of Spirit Wing uh, to assign those uh, uh, leases to new ownership. Uh, there are provisions in that lease uh, that require the city to approve uh, those assignments, uh, but we cannot withhold approval unreasonably uh, there's really no clear standard set on what uh, reasons you would object to this, uh, if any. Uh, so it's it's pretty much uh, uh, based on a request from the owner to to uh, assign the lease somewhere else. He will he actually assign the lease and be out of the lease. It'd be new ownership, oh. and so I will let the owner Spirit Wing uh, uh, go first. Identify yourself and address, please. Calvin Burgess, and uh, I guess in Guthrie, I live at the Dominion House. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, most of the time, I live in North Texas. And um, a few years ago, we, my wife and I were able to purchase a big piece of property in, in East Texas that's very special to us. It's, it's got almost unlimited water underneath it, so its value is extremely high. And so <clears throat> we are basically selling all of our worldwide assets and moving everything into uh, that property and that includes uh, the Guthrie hangars however I have a jet program that unfortunately had to shut down because of the COVID thing but it is about to resume again and it is going to stay here we have two buyers that want to purchase it 
uh, Bob back here, and another gentleman, Bob Bartman, I'm sorry. And then the other one is a Marvin Pittman, but Marvin is very ill with COVID right now. He's got that Delta variant, and uh, he's going to survive, but it's otherwise he'd be here. Uh, effectively, the southern hangar, the number two, will be what Bob will run, and they will put it probably, I'm speaking for him in a way, but not, he can speak for himself, I'm wrong here. But I think their goal is to put about four corporate jets in it and run the jet fuel system out of it um, and put in some corporate cars and some really nice stuff that will make them really upgrade the airport a lot. Uh, the second one, Marvin Pittman, he's an AI and an ANP, which means he's an inspecting authority and an aircraft mechanic. And he has all the licenses for some very specialized things like rebuilding landing gear which is also the most expensive and the most profitable part of aviation, I think, if you're in that business, and avionics, and all those things really need to be in the Guthrie Airport. Um, so he will be taking the hangar to the north and providing those services uh, to the public, and likely maintaining some of the planes that will be put into the, to the south hangar. It should greatly increase the fuel cells, particularly on the jet fuel. Should be good for the city, and um, we want to leave, We're, we'll still be around off and on, but, but I want to leave it. Uh, I think we've, we did a lot to get this airport moving years ago to try and get the, the runways extended. And part of that was doing these hangars so that there was a lot of things. But all good things have to come to an end sometimes. So uh, that's what, what we've done. So we have two very qualified, viable buyers. And, um, and then uh, that's what we're asking for is just an assignment of the leases. Make a motion to approve. Second. second. Motion and Wait a second. second. And oh, Leroy. Uh, staff has a couple recommendations on hangar number two, uh, and we would recommend that you approve it subject to the city attorney uh, preparing a uh, lease assignment document to be signed by the city. Uh, by Spirit Wing and Mr. Bartman, so there's an official agreement. And then the second thing we would recommend, uh, there's currently an outstanding balance on the old CDBG EDI fund, about $30,800, and we would recommend that uh, one of the requirements to uh, uh, assign this lease is the that that old loan be paid in full before the assignment of the lease. So I'll amend it. Uh, we'll work it out. Accept that and accept those changes. Okay. Show the light. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? Okay. Submit your votes. I'll go through. See the votes. Unanimous approval. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Present then uh, to move forward with the uh, assignment of hangers. Two and 21. And the I've got system. a different comment on 21, so that's just two I was talking about. Oh, so we're not done? We got a re vote? Uh, I think we ought to treat them separately, and one okay. would be assignment of lease uh, on hangar two. Well, I motioned okay. them together, so how, I, how do I split it? Uh, just make your motion. Uh, Relative to uh, hangar number two. Okay, so motion is relative to hangar number two, current motion. Agreed. Accept that second. Okay. Any other discussion? We're just talking about hangar number two. We're talking about uh, a lease agreement that would be going through the attorney. Um, the payment of the and, loan. And the payment of the uh, um, outstanding uh, balance. Okay. Okay. Submit your votes. approval then for hangar number two uh, uh, with the amendment uh, to work through uh, the uh, city attorney and the uh, full payment as the outstanding balance of the loan. Now, On hangar, hangar 21, I've, I've got it broke into three things. This this would be hangar 21. Now is that going to add the fuel system too or is that a separate it, issue it, as well? It will be a third item. Okay. This is just hangar 21. Hangar 21 lease, all we're recommending is again uh, a lease assigned document 
uh, prepared by the city attorney for uh, signatures by Spirit Wing, Mr. Pittman, who is doing that lease in the city of Guthrie. And that's the only recommendation we have on assignment of Hangar 21. Okay. So moved on 21. Okay. We have a motion and a second on Hangar 21. Any other discussion? Mitch votes. Okay. Votes. Unanimous approval for those from those present uh, to um, move forward with the uh, with the change in, in hangar 21, uh, subsequent to, to uh, a appropriate lease being reviewed by our city attorney. The fuel the, cell. The third one would be dealing with the fuel system agreement. Um, and again, um, two recommendations. One would be subject to the city attorney preparing a lease assignment agreement. Uh, but in this particular case, because right now the fuel system agreement is tied to lease 21, we think all four parties ought to sign this one. Uh, Mr. Pittman, Mr. Bartman, and because right now it's tied to 21, it's being moved to number two. So we think all four parties ought to sign this agreement. Okay. The other thing that we would recommend is, um, and only if the uh, uh, tenants uh, uh, want it, is right now the fuel system agreement it says Spirit Wing shall have the right to install two additional fuel storage tanks for its own commercial use, provided, however, Spirit Wing shall not be entitled to sell or dispense any 100 low lead fuel from either of these two tanks to any unrelated person or entity. Such storage tanks are to be solely for the use of Spirit Wing and its affiliates. This was written many, many years ago, and I think it lacks some clarity on the ability of who has these, uh, uh, the fuel system agreement on who they specifically can sell fuel to, who they can't. And we would recommend that that be clarified in this transfer agreement so it's clear what the rights of that individual has. Let me, let me clarify. You want to come to the yes. microphone, Mr. Burgess? <clears throat> Thank you. Let me, I'm still my same guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> same address? Same address. Okay, let me give you some history here. When the fuel tanks, the, the government decided in their infinite wisdom that we had to change all the fuel systems at all the airports about 15, 20 years ago. And the city of Guthrie did not have the funds to do it at that point in time. So I came forward with the proposal, and I had the only jet on the property. So I used to have a truck out there that I'd fill up and fill up my jet. So we came to a, a, an agreement with the city council to um, let me build fuel tanks for my own use. I also had two very fuel thirsty, a bomber and a P-51 Mustang there. So. I was feeding my own planes with it. So part of the deal was that I would build one jet fuel plant tank and one 100 low lead tank. But I would not sell the 100 low lead to anybody else. And that we've never done. It was also so the city would get all the revenue off of the 100 low lead that was being sold through your own tank. And then I paid for your tank. And I put it in and did the whole thing there at a considerable expense. So those tanks, that's how it got to be in there. And going forward, what the intention is now is not to compete with the jet, this 100 low lead that the city sells, but the tanks, we will leave the tanks, they will both become jet fuel, um, and we'll have a great backup of jet fuel. So we'd have roughly 16,000 gallons of jet fuel on the property, instead of 8,000 is what we've been using out of my tank. So there'll be no low lead. You, the city has the city's, a, the city's city's yeah. right. But, right. You'll so, still have that. That's a self-service thing. Right. And there's a thing about it. 100 low lead. Uh, <clears throat> most people want to buy 12 gallons at a time or whatever, and they top up their plane and they want to save a dollar a gallon. So a lot of the guys want to pump it themselves, and so that just helped. So 100 low lead has happened throughout the airport system at this point. 
but really your, your revenue stream off of that stays exactly the same. The jet fuel will be um, basically as it is now in a sense. We, we, use it, we put it in our tanks and then it's sold to whoever and we have an agreement uh, that we split the revenues with, with Crabtree. Okay. And then he's planning on doing a similar situation. All right. Does that make sense? But what your recommendation is, is that that yeah. be clarified in writing? Yes, I think Mr. Yeah. Bartman yeah. has a okay. comment. Hi, Bob Bartman, Weatherford, Oklahoma. Uh, yeah, to clarify what Leroy is saying is, the language in there is the word affiliates. I intend to, I would be the sole owner of the plane and fuel that plane only, there would be no affiliates. The people that I want to bring to that hangar, right now there's a B-1 bomber in there. I want to bring four or five people to put their jets in there, rent them out, create more traffic for the city of Guthrie, more revenue for the city of Guthrie. Uh, so I think what Leroy is concerned about, and I 100% agree, is those are not my affiliates. They may be tenants of mine in the hangar, but they would fuel through the city of Guthrie and like any normal person that would land at the airport my aircraft would fuel at the rate that we discussed because it's my personal aircraft. But uh, that's the long-term, and really my long-term goal with the airport, with the city's hopefully long-term relationship and partnership, I spoke to Glenn Crabtree today, is that on my cost, I want a real estate development company, is to, at my cost, kind of take that property and just give it an uplift to bring more traffic reasons for people to fly to Guthrie, Edmond Region Airport versus all, everywhere else. And, and I think Glenn told me we sold about 45,000 gallons last year. I think it's very simple if we put four aircrafts in Hangar 2, that number goes up exponentially. So it's a win-win for everybody. Thank you. So my request was because there is some lack of clarity in the wording that uh, the party signing this, that our city attorney works with them to make sure that maybe it's spelled out a little clearer going forward in the future and incorporate that language in the assignment agreement. So you can work with, with our city attorney and resolve it. So I make a motion to approve based on uh, putting together a clear agreement. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Which votes? Public hearing. votes. Unanimous approval from all of the councilmen present. And we appreciate you guys, by the way. Our too. community does. So what happens to the B-1 bomber? <laughs> I don't know. I trust the but they can stay as long as they want. I mean, I've heard that they're going to be out sometime early next year. Oh, okay. I've got several tenants ready to come. Yeah. And okay. in a perfect world, we would all like that. Sure. They're flying 250 hours a year. Yeah. So, um, I, I'm hoping to have another meeting with all of you. I just thought it was cool. So I just wanted to where I was going to go. <laughs> <laughs> Exciting opportunity and potential. Sure. Yeah. All right. Item number 12, discussion, possible action uh, on the uh, FHWA uh, Thank you, project, Thank uh, you. Logan County Transportation Alternatives, TAP grant uh, for streetscapes. Uh, Tenny, you taking that? Leroy, you taking that? Okay. Agenda packet, they can be kind of small. You talk about that. You got it folded in kind of a nice little organ way, origami way. It's your notebook. Oh, yeah, I see. That's what you say. <laughs> Turned it into a $100 bill. <laughs> A uh, little history on this, of course, this is a, a 2016 uh, grant that's been around for a while, and there was a lot of concerns about curb extensions on Oklahoma and Harrison at Division. Uh, it went through the uh, Section 106 uh, Historic Review and SHPO, uh, the State Historic Preservation Office, uh, rejected the inclusion of the curb extensions and plantings uh, along uh, division uh, and with using uh, federal highway money uh, the project could not move forward without <coughs> re-evaluating the project and designing it in a way that accommodates the comments from SHPO 
Uh, we also looked at uh, maybe relocating uh, these funds to the Harrison Street Bridge project, worked with ODOT for quite a while, it seemed promising, and then they denied that. Uh, so what we're back to is a streetscape project that still serves a purpose, but it won't uh, uh, do everything we originally intend. The, the purpose of the curb extensions or bump outs was to provide better safety enhancement for people across the street, uh, maybe some beautification. Uh, those elements won't be there, but we still will get drainage improvements uh, along division. Uh, and this project runs from the alley north of Oklahoma Avenue to the alley south of Harrison Street on Division. Um, and all sidewalks uh, uh, run shall be stamped concrete, uh, brick pattern, colony red, which we use down the park. Uh, all crosswalks shall be uh, stamped concrete as well. All corners shall be stamped concrete. The alleys will be real brick pavers, and uh, the drives uh, will be concrete. Uh, and again, as I said, the uh, uh, curb extension uh, or the uh, drainage will be improved. Uh, what we need tonight is, is one motion uh, to authorize us to go forward uh, with this concept to ODOT and to SHPO to get their final approval so then we could put this project out for bids. Uh, and the second one, because this has been going on for 2016 and we've asked our architect to redraw this about 50 times, they've got additional expenses and they are asking for uh, the sum of $65,330.46 for additional services, which I think is probably warranted as much as we've had them redraw this project over the last, uh, what, five years? I'd pay that much to never have to hear about it again. <laughs> a motion to approve both together. Second. Can. Yeah. Uh, motion and a second. Any other discussion? Okay. Submit your votes. Okay. See the votes. Unanimous approval from all council present. Okay. And then to move forward with the yep. project yep. modification the AD, and call. also to uh, execute the additional oh, yeah. services of uh, six, approximately 65,000 to Laterra Studios. Item number 13, city manager report. No additional reports. Item 14, uh, comments by city council. Vice Mayor Case. Um, no, I don't think I have anything. Councilman Williams. Welcome to uh, the Barkman and goodbye, unfortunately, to, I, I still spirit wing, I guess. But uh, Calvin Burgess has been a great addition to this city for quite some time ago. And I hate to see him leave, but all good things come to an end. Councilman Taylor. Uh, staff, hey, I appreciate all the officers hard work on everything from all, whether it's Tenny's operation all the way down to the you know, fire chief, chief of police. Uh, down to the fire chief. All the way down to the fire chief. <laughs> yeah, all the way down to the fire chief. <laughs> oh, yeah, and one last thing. Uh, happy birthday, Jim Case. Well, thank you. Happy anniversary. Yeah. That's it. And anniversary. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, and happy anniversary yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. That's about right. <laughs> Great job on the budget, everybody. It was painless <laughs> this year, and I think it's um, it's a good one. So that's all I've got. Councilman Channel? I didn't have one police chief question. I'm still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> and I only had a couple for Harlow. But since we're on it, Bothroyd's crying about the old body shop down on the South Division that's ugly. Since we're going to beautify the division, we need to beautify that joint too. Well, we need to beautify every entryway to our town is what we need to do. And if you go around, and I have, there's some that aren't near um, as inviting as others. And, and that main south division is a main thoroughfare. And, and you probably need to visit with Dan and Bill on that. I know the city looked at it one time, and it was going to be cost prohibitive for the city to undertake that project. 
And now that we're maybe in a better financial situation, uh, so you might want to visit with them to get the ball rolling on that one. Anything else? I'm good. Okay. Uh, we've got uh, vacancy in the uh, Guthrie Housing Authority uh, board. Uh, anybody interested in that? I think we still have airport uh, a vacancy. Sean, is that I'm not correct? Okay. Uh, so at least two opportunities to uh, get uh, more involved with uh, with your community. Um, congratulations to everybody involved with the Jeep Fest, as well as the last uh, of the Red Brick Nights for this year. Uh, huge successes all, all around. Uh, I know we've got a big car show coming up uh, at Mineral Wells. Uh, there'll be people coming in from all adjacent states, I, I, I understand, for it. it. It is big. Of course, we have, we have the, the fantastic uh, fly-in uh, coming up on the 18th. Uh, and a uh, great opportunity to come out and see, see your airport uh, in, 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 uh, in full uh, uh, regalia and uh, kids get some opportunity to fly for, for free. Uh, so a great opportunity there. Um, COVID is still with us, folks. Um, if you haven't got the shot, consider, consider getting it. Uh, and if you're in a compromised situation, uh, wear the mask. Um, I think we're going to be fighting this for a long time. Uh, item, uh, item number 15, consider approval to convene to executive session uh, for the purposes of discussing uh, the continuation of the uh, uh, well, continued employment of a city uh, clerk and treasurer, uh, the uh, judge, uh, city judge and alternate judge, and the city attorney. All three positions. Have a motion. Looking for a second down here. What? <laughs> we know what you want. Well, then say something. Okay. I ain't doing it. Tracy said it. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Submit your votes. Unanimous approval then to move into executive session for those uh, three positions. 